He's my king from this day until his last day. Long live the king! Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. May have gone a little bit overboard on that intro, but I'd say it turned out pretty good and it was worth it after all. We are here today to talk about my newest 7 star rank 3, the world's first 7 star rank 3 Deathless King Groot, a champion that I am so excited to start making content for. We're going to cover a bunch of stuff in this video today. We'll talk about his basic mechanics and rotation, maybe what separates him a little bit from the original King Groot. We'll go through his utility. We'll go through some of his ideal matchups. We'll cover at least one non-ideal matchup, talk about him in questing, talk about him in Battlegrounds. Unfortunately, Battlegrounds is in the offseason right now, so I'll have to make a separate video covering his usefulness there. We'll get to that eventually. And then finally, we'll finish up with a couple of long form fights too so buckle up and let's jump right in all right we'll start off today against everyone's favorite punching bag i do want to make a note here all of this gameplay will be unboosted and without synergies unless i specifically call it otherwise so you can have a better idea of how he functions by himself so in terms of like mechanics and rotation he functions very similarly to the original king Groot here to start off the fight we're in the fury phase he rotates between that and a regen phase regen phase is only if you're duped and obviously we don't have the dupe yet we're going to be firing off the special wand to place permanent armor breaks and you'll notice that we are gaining ignition buffs when we expend one of our furies to make those armor breaks permanent that is a feature of, of deathless king root only so those ignition buffs are going to increase the potency of the incinerate that happens after our special two here so we've built up 12 furies via the gamora relic best relic for him i think this special two hits like an absolute truck and now we have an incinerate that's ticking for nearly 10,000 damage per second 16k light crits there one more special one to almost finish him off and the incinerate does it that is a 48 second fight not too shabby all right let's move on to one of his ideal matchups and that is any tech champion who is also tagged as a hero if you fight a defender like this his special two is going to deal double damage now original king Groot special two did triple damage against robot champions however there are way more tech heroes than there are robots and more room for growth in tech hero as well so i think this is in the long run is going to be a bit better so you're going to see we're playing this basically the same way that we played winter soldier we've already used our special one to place our ignition buffs on ourselves and then from here we're just trying to build up additional furies we've got 12 of them that is a ton and you're going to see this special two absolutely rip through almost his entire health pool and then he can't even dash forward before the incinerates take him out that is a 38 second fight i think so you can see the damage increase uh pretty significant all right let's switch gears for a quick moment and talk about some utility so both king Groods have an ability where they can spend one of their personal fury buffs in order to remove any debuff in the game and we're going to see that here against this Iceman. we get the cold snap on us it is immediately removed and we can continue the fight as normal without taking any of that damage over time now where deathless king Groot differs from the original in this specific mechanic is that his is no longer categorized as a purify effect which means he can get around nodes that punish purify like cold turkey or champions like apocalypse who specifically prevent purify will no longer be able to do so or other champions who punish purify will no longer be able to do so so again this is a huge improvement i think over the original king Groot, and something that will probably pay dividends uh further down the road in addition here you're seeing that Iceman is uh, incinerate immune so we can't really rely on our special two for damage in this fight uh, but even with the, just the basic attacks with the furies and uh, we're getting some passive furies from the node as well uh, this fight ends up being an absolute joke for the king okay let's talk about one of my favorite matchups for king Groot and that is Killmonger here and Deathless King Groot makes this matchup just as easy if not better 
So you can kind of simulate a Battlegrounds type environment with this fight. There is some extra damage on our part from the nodes here, uh, but I would have no issues taking a King Groot against a Killmonger in Battlegrounds. And the reason for that is that to disable Killmonger's reverb, you need an armor break. And because King Groot is able to spend a Fury buff to get a permanent armor break, one special one is all you need to turn off Killmonger's reverb for the entire fight and then from there you can focus on dealing a ton of damage build up to your special two fire it off for a big amount of burst damage and a nice 12k per second incinerate and then from here we can keep it paused with a heavy like that and then all the while just keep whittling them down with our basic attacks here so again very effective against Killmonger Killmonger has kind of enjoyed a bit of a resurgence uh, as a defender but uh, I think King Groot one of his best matchups Speaking of permanent debuffs, one great reason to have them available is because of how well they synergize with the Despair Mastery, which is a mastery that I think everybody should be running 3 out of 3 points in. So in this fight, this is back in Realm of Legends against Wolverine, we are going to essentially turn off his healing completely with just a few special ones. We've already got one off there, we've cut down his healing by about... Uh, 45% I think is the value. I think it's 15% per debuff here. And we're going to be able to launch a second special one as soon as our Furies come back here. And now 90% of his healing is gone. And I don't think I'm able to get back to my special 2 before this Fury cycle wears off. So I think I did make the decision to just cash in on the Furies that I have before they expire. We launch a third special one. Now we're up to 9. The healing, as you can see, is completely turned off. And from here, we can race back up to the special 2 as quickly as we can. And hopefully it lines up when the Fury phase starts up again here. So we are about at our special 2. The Furies are about to kick back in. Probably could have launched it right away. I'm not really sure why I went for a full combo though. But either way, that is Realm of Legends Wolverine down in a minute without any access to heal reversal. Pretty good. Alright, moving on to a questing scenario. This is a War Machine boss from Act 8. Uh, like seven or 800,000 health, I can't remember. And I really wanted to showcase how large King Groot's health pool is unboosted. It's over 100,000 health. It is the second largest health pool in the game behind Sasquatch right now and you really need it in a fight like this. So in this specific fight, uh, War Machine is going to cause us to reflect damage onto ourselves for every armor up that he has and we can reduce that damage uh, by having debuffs on him. So you can see I've already placed the permanent armor breaks on him with a special one. And then from here you can see we're doing big bursts of damage to him but at some point I take an enormous chunk of my health back in damage right there and you can see it's just kind of a race to beat him before we end up killing ourselves. But thanks to that glorious health pool, uh, we got it done. All right, let's move on to some more difficult content. This is Dr. Doom from the Grandmaster's Gauntlet, and this is definitely what I would call a non-ideal matchup. Doom is a mystic character, he has class advantage, he counteracts a lot of the stuff that King Groot tries to do. So in this fight, what we are going to try to do is prevent Doom from throwing his special one at any point, because if we make contact with him while that aura of Hazarath is active, he is going to nullify our buffs, and since we don't have regen because we are unduped, we really are going to be unable to recoup a lot of that shock damage plus we'll be in danger of taking one of his doom backhands whenever he wants so we're trying to block bait special twos in this fight which is a little bit dangerous because this fight also has bubble shield deathless king Groot is an xl champ so we don't have to worry about the glancing we can more or less play that part of the fight straight up and then if we need to heal up a little bit we can go straight to the special three which is something that i really haven't talked about uh, in this video yet so of course most people are familiar with how strong King Groot's regen is when he's duped and at high or max sig. But the unduped version also has access to a pretty nasty regen via the special 3 and you'll see it in action in just a minute here in this fight. So the special 3 is going to trigger a regen buff that's going to last for 2 or 3 seconds so very short but very strong and that's going to heal 10% of his health. If you expend a Fury buff via the Special 3, that healing is bumped up to 15% of your maximum health. And then if you're running into Recovery Mastery like you should be, that's an extra 15% on top of that, so your total health gained is going to range between 11.5% and 17.25%, so a pretty significant amount of health from that Special 3. 
So we're going to use the special 3 here to push Doom back to his special 2, which is what I've been trying to do for most of this fight. And you're going to see just how strong the regen is in these few ticks. Ticking for 1900, that is nearly 4000 health back every second. And we are back up to a yellow bar, which is where we will stay for the rest of this fight, by the way. So again, even if you are playing with an unduped Deathless King Groot, you don't have a gem laying around, you don't want to wait for the dupe, don't feel like you don't have any access to health recovery because that special 3 can really save your butt in the right situation. And especially in like long form content like a fight like this, or if you're taking him into Labyrinth or Abyss or Necropolis or whatever you know part of the game you are in, don't be afraid to use that special 3 to recoup some of that health when you need to. Uh, so we're going to delay our combo there a bit, fire off another big special 2, and uh, ticking for about 4,000 damage per second here. We are nailing every one of these special 2 dexes, which is probably the first time I've ever done this in my life. Using the striker there, and between our basic combos and the incinerates here, uh, that is going to finish Doom off. Gauntlet Doom with a full yellow bar. Pretty damn good. Alright, let's turn up the difficulty level a little bit more. This is Abyss Iron Man Infinity War. He is a tech champion who is also tagged as a hero and therefore one of Deathless King Groot's ideal matchups. Now in this fight in particular, our first goal is to get an armor break applied with a special one. There we go. And that's going to turn off the Abyssal ability for the rest of the fight. So Abyss Iron Man, every 10 hits, he steals your power. It is a steal effect and not a drain effect. So we do have to disable it uh, with those armor breaks. And the good news is that because our armor breaks are permanent, we don't have to worry about that. For the rest of the fight and his energy resistance is now being lowered by 24 percent as well so in the abyss unlike other everest content like labyrinth and like necropolis you have a hit counter which you can kind of see uh, underneath iron man's uh, health bar there so abyss fights are more about exercises in conservation and kind of what i mean by that is that you really have to maximize your damage over time and you want to maximize the damage that you can do in as few hits as possible so to that end, what you're going to see me do quite a bit in this fight is a lot of reparries and a lot of heavy attacks. The heavy attack pauses the incinerates on a defender for a specific number of seconds. If you use the heavy while you have a fury buff on you, you extend the duration of that pause as well. So what that's going to end up doing is give us like a lot of free damage. I mean, it's not really free, but you kind of get the idea. While we're waiting for him to dash into us for a reparry, or we're trying to bait out a special, we are still dealing a lot of damage over time, and that's going to end up being the difference in this fight. We talked a little bit earlier about Deathless King Groot's dupe. Most people think it's really all about the region, but there is a secondary clause to it that I think is very important to him, and that is that it increases the duration of his incinerate debuffs by up to 100% at SIG 200. So at max SIG, you're effectively getting double the duration of your incinerates, and that also means double the damage output as well. And I remember doing this fight in particular with the original King Groot way back in the day. I had max recoil running, I was max boosted, I had this huge synergy team, and it still was barely enough. And you're going to see just how easily, by comparison, an unduped Deathless King Groot can get through this fight. So if you take a look at these incinerates that I'm placing on Iron Man now, and then you start to think about... Okay, what happens if they are double the duration, double the effective damage output as well? You can see how easy it would then be to start stacking them on top of each other with a special 2, keeping all of them paused with the heavy attack. And if you have 3 or 4 of these incinerates stacked, and they're each ticking for you know six or 7 or 8,000 damage per second, you can start to imagine just the nutty levels of damage that Deathless King Groot is capable of. And for whatever future long form or Everest type content uh, that Kabam is planning or comes out with or whatever, I really think uh, that Deathless King Groot is going to be a strong contender, especially once he's duped and you can take advantage of that increased duration and of course the uh, regen as well. So we are now below 15%. This is kind of like the danger zone for this fight. Uh, this is actually, the fight is actually bugged. Uh, I submitted this bug uh, the other day when I did this fight. Uh, you can see that from the signature ability, he's still gaining power even when he does not have any armor up effect present. So uh, what should have been an easy and quick finish to this fight uh, instead is dragged out for a few more seconds uh, because he continues to gain power even when his armor up passives are gone. So we're just waiting for a big fury phase to come back here. 
uh, trying not to trigger too much of the fight in Coward, and we're going to try and end it with a big special 2 and the associated incinerate. By the way, I talked a minute or two ago about the Abyss hit counter, and you can see we are not even remotely close to moving into the second set of Abyss charges here. And King Groot finishes this fight 2.6 million health in under 4 minutes. Alright, the last fight I want to show for you today is a solo of Necropolis Odin, 6.5 million health. Couple things to note about this fight. I am boosted, but I am not max boosted. So when I went through Necropolis Exploration, I was max boosted on every fight just because it was going to give me the most damage output here. I didn't really want to waste my big boosts on a uh, showcase video like this because they are very expensive. Uh, so I had to settle for medium boosts, and even with that, we can get through this fight without running out of time. Uh, as far as synergies for this fight, I believe the only synergy I'm running is original King Groot, which I talked about uh, in the previous fight. Uh, I really value that increased combat power rate. It comes in handy. Um, I don't think that I would bring that synergy into like a real questing scenario uh, because there's just so much overlap between Deathless and OG King Groot that I wouldn't want to waste a team spot on a character that's so similar. So, But in a fight like this, a showcase like this, I got no problem bringing him uh, for a synergy here. Uh, of course, we have reverse controls to deal with uh, in this fight. That makes it a little bit extra difficult, and we do have to worry about keeping Odin's buffs up. If you know how this fight works, Odin doesn't take any damage unless he has like six or more buffs on him. So you really have to do a good job managing his buffs in addition to managing your own damage output. So I'm not going to talk through the rest of this solo because it does go on for another like five or six minutes, I think. Uh, but I do encourage you to stick around for the whole thing. I think you're going to see some very surprising damage numbers once the potency of King Groot's Fury starts maxing out and we start to get some really, really good burst cycles there. So if there's one thing I want people to take away from this showcase, it's that you know while King Groot and while Deathless King Groot are never going to find their way onto anybody's top 5 or top 10 even on like a cosmic tier list, uh, the damage that this guy in particular is capable of dishing out unduped and without relying on any sort of synergy partners is pretty incredible. Anyways, I'm really happy with where this guy ended up. I think the dev did a fantastic job with him, made some really good decisions too. Talk about the regen one more time. An original King Groot at SIG 200 has like stupid levels of regen, right? And even when you cut that regen in half for the Deathless version, the regen at SIG 200 is still pretty silly. Uh, but the sacrifice there, the trade-off, is that you get access to so much more damage than the original could ever have. And uh, to that end, I think for me personally, as one of the biggest King Groot fans in MCOC, Deathless King Groot is superior to the original version in, in just about every way. And I think for me, uh, he's probably going to replace the original in whatever type of questing or content scenario that I would normally bring the original version to. And I cannot wait to get this guy duped. However I can, I've got a bunch of Sig Stones sitting around that we've collected over the past couple months that I could probably dump into him. Uh, looking forward to that. So anyways, folks, I'm going to let the rest of the fight play out. Uh, again, I encourage you to watch the whole thing. If you enjoyed this showcase, please let me know in a comment below that says, Long live the king. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again next time.